I'm calling this the bridge table. Let me show you how I made it. Let me show you how I make an accurate mark in the center of the piece, in this case for a lap joint where we want both pieces to be cut exactly half away so when they go together uh, they'll be flush on each surface. So I have a mark roughly in the center. Uh, this is 1 and 7 eighths and uh, so that's 15 16 and what I'm going to do is take my marking gauge. I have two adjustments on this particular one. This one, uh, basically this one locks it so I can do fine adjustment and then this locks the whole thing when I'm done with the fine adjustment. So uh, with both of them open I can get roughly to that mark and then I'll just lock this one. If you have one with just one um, with one knob on it you could do the same thing. You could just loosen it slightly or just tap it on the end and get it to move. So I'm gonna make a mark on the wood. Then I'm gonna flip it around and make another mark and I don't know if you can see, but they are, they are separated. And when I'm coming from this side, you can see that my marking gauge is making this line. So it needs to go closer to the center by half that width between those two lines. So this is where the fine adjust comes in because I can eyeball it make a little adjustment, mark it again, and if I land in the line, not yet. Of course you can do this on a piece of your wood where you're not going to see it. There you go. So now I'm dead in center. I get that groove on both sides, and now when I make my cuts uh, with whatever, a chisel, a saw, or my table handsaw or my table saw, I'm going to get exactly that line and that's going to get you the joinery quality that you want. The way that a kerf maker works is we've got set here the width of the piece that's going to go into our lap joint and then this other piece uh, is adjusted for the kerf of the blade. And so I've got this set right now to cut on this side, here's, here's where I'm going to remove material, and I've got it set to cut on this side. And once I cut that, I'm going to flip this over. There's a magnet in there that holds these pieces together. And slide this over, and then it'll cut the other uh, side of my lap joint, and that should fit perfectly. So you can see they come out nice and clean and flat. Uh, because I adjusted the blade up to make this uh, clean out cut uh, right to my line, there's a little bit in the corner here. I'll get, out, get that uh, cleaned out with a chisel. These pieces are gonna go into the bottom feet just to here. So it's gonna be a half lap. And I'm not gonna use the same setup. What I'm gonna do is 
I'm just going to cut close to my marked line. I marked this using the width of that wood. I'm going to cut close to it, get rid of this material, and then just sneak up on it until, until it fits, until this edge is flush with this edge, because that's what I want. I've got these all finished. I cleaned these parts out, and you saw me do these uh, nice and square, and they are tight. In fact, they'd probably be difficult to get together right now because I made them so tight. But I'm going to sand these uh, a little bit, and that will make them for a good fit. Uh, I know that the distance here is good because I can see that right there. And I want these to be tight. They're not going to be a loose joint. On the top, this, this piece is going to come out. Uh, the long spine is going to come out so the, so the desk can come apart. So this can be a little bit loose. This cannot because it's going to be structural. So once it's sanded and in there, uh, it'll be glued and screwed and be nice and strong. This is the spine, which is 68 inches long, and it connects the left side and the right side leg assemblies. And I can't use the jig, uh, the curved jig that I use because the fence, it needs to be connected to the fence and then my fence is not long enough. So this is the other way you could do um, lap joints. I've set up a stop here, which is set so when it's touching, it will just get to this inside line. I'll flip it and I'll get both sides. Then I will move this stop over uh, to a rough mark here and get it roughly uh, the width it needs to be. Then I'll remove the material in there and then come back to the table saw and tap this over every little bit, uh, make a pass and check it and when it fits I'm done. For the center arch I drew it out on uh, Inkscape. It's a free drawing program that uh, you can get on the internet. Uh, works very well to create uh, scalable vector graphics. I've got that in some of my other videos. I drew an arch of the right dimensions and I have this piece of poplar. This edge is jointed and this edge is 90 degrees to this edge. I created a grid which allows me to import the file and place it precisely. Um, it'll cut with the top here, uh, the edges, and then the arch will come up in the middle here like this. Um, I'm going to cut it, uh, I'm just going to cut it down about an eighth of an inch um, and then I'll go back, uh, cut it close with the bandsaw and flush it with my router instead of spending all the time on the shaper doing that. Okay, what you're looking at here is the the long spine that's going to uh, support the desk and connect uh, both leg assemblies. So this is uh, the joint I cut earlier. The cross member is going to go through here like this. This is the arch, which I'm calling the outside arch. This is the long arch or the span arch. These are going to get uh, a recess, a, a, a groove in the bottom of this piece right here, so they fit up into it. This piece will be uh, glued in place and will be permanent. This piece uh, will be part of the base and the spine will slide onto it. And the issue with that is I want this joint, this joint's not gonna be invisible because there's gonna be a line, but I want uh, there to be, there'll be a groove here and a tenon here which will fit together, but these these, these pieces are going to be together and this has to come down and over and slide. So this is a mock-up of that joint and uh, in, in the orientation. So you can see this is, the, this is the spine piece. This is the cross piece which goes through here. Uh, this right here is, is this arch and this is this center arch. And you can see this has a tenon and this has a, uh, a groove in it. And this has to be recessed so that uh, when this comes together, 
it, it can't it has to be able to pass by this piece right here so these pieces will come together like this and then about the time that this is engaging the um, the lap joint fits together and so that's nice and strong that way it'll keep it'll keep it from turning in this plane uh, this will be up inside here to keep this from rotating this way although it won't be glued I'll have screws that'll hold that to the to the leg and of course this will be this will be glued into the into the top spine so I need to route the groove uh, for for the top spine and also in this case it's not going to go all the way to the end I don't want it to be shown so it's going to be a stop groove and then this piece will be recessed a half an inch in and I will have a, a shoulder cut here so that um, so that it'll kind of hide the joint if you're looking at it from the bottom there so this will have about an inch cut back and you'll see about a half inch of this piece Instead of sanding, I just decided to use my hand plane and I planed both sides. And then really uh, to fine tune the fit, I just needed to plane in this area here. And uh, because it has to slide when it goes together, it has to come like this and then slide to make the fit. And um, so it's a little loose, which is what I want. This is probably gonna swell a little bit with finish. And like I said, it needs to, it needs to slide. Um, when I get it done, uh, if needed to, I can put some wax on there to get it together, but that'll be, that'll be fine. Let me offer a tip on hand planing uh, a board when there's a notch in it. Uh, normally, if you were planing, let's say, the edge of this board and your fingers were kind of hanging off the edge, there wouldn't be a problem. You could go the full length. In fact, some people will put their finger on the edge here to, to control it or whatever. When you have a notch, either like this or like this, that becomes a problem because if you have your fingers hanging over the edge, as the plane gets to this part right here and, and the blade stops feeling the resistance of the wood, that it's going to jump and you are going to bash with all that force, you're going to bash your finger into that, into that side. Don't ask me how I know that. So I also fit the feet in the same way, I just uh, planed along the edges. Now these I want it tight because they're going to be glued and as you can see they're Nice snug fit. They're flush with the top as per design because uh, we marked the middle and cut to the line and uh, they're flush on, on this side as well. So looking good on the bottoms. Getting ready to do some fitting and some assembly here. I sanded this arch piece and uh, this of course was was uh, plain on this side so I just sanded this side. And getting ready to glue it in and this, this piece is supposed to be flush right here as per my drawings and my measurements. And in actuality if I make it flush on this side it's about a uh, quarter inch or a little bit more um, in on the other side which means that this is this is too short so what I should have done was was measured uh, for this mark right here for this joint um, from the center uh, with this piece in mind and I didn't so the good part is had it been like this in other words too long on both sides it wouldn't clear the the cross member in here I would have had to cut this again so in this case it's going to fall a little bit short like that, but it won't matter because this other piece is going to uh, 
is going to be put together like this and so you're, ne you're never going to notice uh, that it's not lined up with that. Um, so, you know, things happen. I'm about to cut the joinery so that these vertical pieces uh, can join the top and form the legs essentially. And I have marked where I want them to be and obviously it'll be in the center here. I'll use a domino for that, <clears throat> although you could use multiple methods. And the key with, with this is not only to make sure your measurements are the same on the bottom and the top piece so that they'll line up, but it's also important to mark what face is your reference face. So in case uh, the, the tenon is a little close to this side, if the reference face is the same, it'll be the same distance close to this side so that, um, so that they won't be trying to uh, meet in different planes. And what will happen is your, your pieces will get off like this and in a, a piece where you've got a couple dimensions connecting, um, it'll quickly get out of whack. So <clears throat> these pieces go like this in the body I've got them numbered so I know what goes where. I've got reference faces and I've got lines so I can make the domino cuts. <clears throat> and of course I'll put tenons in the end of these, cut them to length, and they'll be ready to go in there. The pieces that are going to go in here, I will show you they're going to be fit in a different way. These other pieces are dry fit together. I'm about to cut the tenons in the end of the vertical pieces and I'm gonna use the domino narrow stock fence. That'll keep that aligned very easily. I've made a tick mark uh, toward one side. So when I cut it, I'll use this, the side that the tick mark's on will be the reference side. So I'll cut it like this and then rotate it. So both cuts are made from the same reference surface. And then the tick mark will still be visible when I go to assemble it, I'll make sure all the tick marks are on one side as I put them together. If it's offset a little bit, it won't matter, not much I can do about it at that point, but it won't matter. However, if one is offset and then I flip the other one, they're liable to be like this and you, that will be noticeable. So, um, you know, the millimeter or two, they might not be centered, is not going to be noticeable in the grand scheme of things. Uh, as long as I keep them all lined up, let's go. Now I need to fit these pieces so they'll interface with this arch. And um, what I did was I marked at the bottom here, I marked where these will actually fit so I can line that up. And because it's the same length uh, as these others, it fits, it fits right in there. And if I just hold it in place and make sure it's lined up on the edge here in the right place, I can come to the other side. I have these numbered so I know which side they go on in what order. So I can come to the other side and just scribe a line with my knife. And there we go. You probably can't see that, but I can see it perfectly. What I learned from the mock-up is that I should uh, mark the edges of the mortise with a gauge first so I have a place to register my chisel and uh, make sure that the depth stop is set across the whole width and uh, that it's deep enough uh, so I can, it'll be easier to get the material out. Need to make sure it's centered but the marking gauge going in from either side will help and um, it's not going to be pretty, but you're not going to see this, so I'm not too concerned about it. I'm more concerned with uh, space for the tenon to uh, uh, have a glue surface for the tenon so it keeps the, uh, the pieces in place.
So that's what the mortises look like marked with a marking gauge and just pencil lines for the end because the end will be defined by the uh, radius of the bit. The vertical pieces that had the highest angle cut on them, when I cut it square and then used the domino, you can see it didn't get very deep into there. Um, in fact, it didn't even, didn't even make a round on this side. So I need more space for the tenon to go in. So I took another piece of scrap uh, a, a one of the cutoffs that was the same and I bored actually from this side there's my mark I bored in using the domino and then I just attached some scrap glued it to the sides so it would have a corner reference and now that I know this side is this is the reference face I can align it with this side and I can just clamp it in place and I can go through the top uh, this will align the bit and get down there as far as I can and get some more depth on the mortise. So through the magic of television, I've got this piece and the other one glued up. Uh, what I did not show you is this is glued and screwed back together. I beveled these pieces uh, 45 degrees. Uh, and these three are thinned out down to five eighths of an inch, so there's a slight reveal. This is a three quarter inch piece, and I didn't want them to be flush. I had to re remake one of these pieces for whatever reason. Uh, it was about an eighth of an inch short. The curve met fine, so I'm not really sure what happened, but remade that piece. It happens, and uh, you just kind of go with the flow. Luckily, I left my domino set up, so I didn't have to redo that. The rest was simply ripping it down, uh, putting the domino in. Uh, thinning it up and cutting the uh, the curve on there so it wasn't wasn't too hard. So I'm not quite sure what happened here. I think I must have altered one of those outside arch pieces and um, changed the dimensions. So after. About 30 minutes of being very frustrated with the whole process of how that turned out the way it turned out. Um, I decided the best way to deal with it was to shorten this piece in this direction so it didn't interfere with the arch and I didn't have to cut the tenon again. So I used my router plane and took about an eighth of an inch off out of the bottom. And then I used a low angle block plane to to uh, plane this end grain, the poplar planes very nicely. And I just made sure that it was square this direction so it wasn't tilted this way or that way and square this way. And it seems to have worked. So I definitely faced some challenges with this that I did not anticipate, uh, the, the one joint not fitting together. Um, just uh, the difference, anytime you do something for the first time, you're going to find things that uh, you didn't plan for. But other than that, I'm really happy with it. It came out as per my drawings. Uh, for the most part, the methods that I used or came up with to figure things out worked very well. So I definitely had some challenges with this, but overall I'm happy with the piece. 
Uh, I had to come up with some different things, some different methods to implement some of the joints that I, um, that I used on this. Uh, but overall, I'm happy with how things uh, went together from a process. I'm happy with the methods and uh, the quality of the joinery and how all that went together. And overall, pretty happy with the piece.